Hey everyone, welcome to the dungeon of Nahilbeck. I think I said it correctly. This is a turn based RPG, and without further ado, let's start. I will choose the default setting as far as difficulty goes. I will play through the tutorial. Narrator gender, male or female, let's take it like that. I have played through the tutorial a bit. Up until I think it is the last battle. There is quite a lot of things to go through the tutorial section. You shall not pass. Back for the Undy. First chapter, a feeling of deja vu. The party advances. A steely-eyed ranger, a brutal barbarian, a ruthless ogre, a wizardess with fiery hair, an agile elf, a wily thief, a dwarf, well, you know, just a dwarf. Together, they have just crossed into the terrible dungeon of Nahelbuk. This dungeon's nothing to write home about. We'll find inside here, but it stinks. That's easy. The ogre just took a dump five feet from the door. <laughs> I've got a strange feeling of deja vu. Because of the ogre shit? Have you been here before? I feel like I'd know if I had. Probably not. No one's ever got in here before. By the way, what is our quest? We must find the 12th statuette of Gladalfura. A statuette? It's written in the tablets of Skellis that only a one-legged gnome from the northern forest, dancing by the moonlight in the middle of 12 statuettes wrapped a in hair. <clears throat> As I was saying, only a one-legged gnome shall open the gates of Zaral back and thus accomplish the prophecy. But what is this strange prophecy? No idea. We're only in it for the gold. That's why we came here. Yeah, and I knocked before coming in. And I called you a half-wit. Okay, ah. let's all get along, okay? Let's focus on the statuette. Do we have any idea where it's located? Like every statuette, it's in a treasure room, guarded by a powerful warlock. Battle! Hmm, maybe his powers are even greater than mine. Sounds about right. What kind of monsters live here? So, if you look at the random encounter table, these are the monsters in this dungeon. Several kinds of undead, giant spiders, orcs and goblins. Hey, goblins! Underground trolls, warlocks, cursed knights, mutant rats, a bottle of oil, some toilet paper, two sponges, and ravioli. I think you're also reading your shopping list. So no dragons, right? Nah, well above our level, Cap. Anyway, let us go forth! So let's start the tutorial. Movement. Moving the party around is easy. Just click anywhere on the ground with left click. You can also hold it down to lead the party. You can swap the leader by clicking on any character of your choosing. Okay. You can zoom in, zoom out. Okay, that's easy enough. Let's proceed. Halt! You arrived at a junction and must face three choices. Hmm. All those doors are closed and blocked off by a strange glowing seal. Weird. And I'm having another deja vu. Oh, shiny, pretty. Probably some kind of magic lock we have to dispel. No way we're getting f***ed over by some goddamn door. My cousin Krimli always says, if it's magic, hit it harder! No, wait! Oops. Ah, oh, my head. You f***ing 
more... Where are they? Shit! Hey! Dwarf! Elf! Dang it! Did everybody get lost but me? What was that noise? Good, now that you know the basics, go forth into the dungeon of Nahelbeck. So let's proceed. It's funny how he walks. Oh, damn it, an orc! And I'm alone, of course, I'm alone! This is the perfect opportunity to discuss the matter of combat, a crucial subject when adventuring in mysterious dungeons. Open door! Gotta go! Me eat bad, go tripe! No, I I'm not done! Go away, you meanie! Well, sounds like an elf. Anyway, be cool, he's alone, this shouldn't be a problem. So action points, every character has two action points, they can perform an action and move once per turn. They can also move further by using both action points, sacrificing their action. This is printing. Order is not a problem, this means you can move and then attack, or the opposite. Be careful as some actions will end your turn even if your character still has two action points. This orc looks uh, rather distracted. Move the ranger on one of the three tiles behind him. Orientation. As you can see with this orc, the orientation of the characters is important. Backstabbing is, gives higher precision and will do more damage. Orient yourself towards the orc to backstab him, so you can set your orientation like that. Time to attack. Select the melee attack in the action bar. Mouse over the orc. Here you'll find an overview of the afflictions and status effects which can affect characters and their durations in turns. You can also check in this box their dodge value in percentage, their protection value, their level and their threat level. The down arrow means the orc is suffering from a penalty to his characteristics for two turns. So this is a hurried orc, level 1, protection 0, dodge 0, opportunity attacks. Precision base 86, percent, position 10 percent, total 96 percent. Okay, here are the details of your precision, this is very important. As you can see, you have a positioning bonus because you are standing behind the enemy. However, if your attack succeeds, your enemy may still dodge or parry your blow. It's not just about having high precision. Attack the orc and kick his ass. Let's attack him. The orc is not feeling so good. Use eye on him to access details about his statuses and afflictions. So we can see the orc is weakened. This means he's left efficient now that he's all banged up. His precision, physical resistance and magical resistance are worse. There are three weakness thresholds depending on the character's health. If a character's health bar changes color, this means they are weakened. So he's weakened, minus 5 precision, minus 10 physical resistance, minus 10 magic resistance, minus 1 movement, for 2 turns. <coughs> this panel also allows you to see the detailed afflictions which affect the character. Here, it's a penalty of minus one to movement for a duration of two turns. I'll kill the orc. So I can't do anything else, right? No, it's. I think it's my turn. At the end of combat, all characters gain some experience, they gain a baseline share just for having participated in the combat, and a varying amount depending on their actions, or their luck. A character who goes unconscious during combat will suffer a small penalty to their experience gain. The ranger has lost some health points. Heal him by giving him a potion, or with a heal, he, party heal button. Health does not regenerate between battles, so you'll have to make sure to heal your wounds after combat. So let's use uh, heal everyone, I guess. Well, it tastes bad. Reminds me of my granny's soup. Hooray! You saved me! Uh, this is... Uh, yeah, he, he's... Uh, I mean, 
they're gone. There were more than one? So many I couldn't even count them. But I killed one, which sent them all running. Are you all right? It was horrible. I found myself in these disgusting toilets. But where are the others? Uh, what's going on? It's because of that moronic dwarf. He must have triggered a magic trap. The whole part has been scattered around this floor. We need to find them. Um, how about we don't find the dwarf? <laughs> no, we'll need his axe if there are other orcs. Don't you think you could handle them by yourself? Yeah, that's... Even the greatest heroes have their limits. Anyway, let's not hang around here. We've got some experience. Let's enter here. With a uh, tab, you can... Check the... Interactable objects, six gold coins, bronze vase. The simple vase created by some no-name is made even uglier by its engravings. You could use it as a flower pot or to spice up your marital disputes. Let's take everything. Yeah, that's a dead end. So let's open the door here. Ah, here's the thief. Yippee! Plus, he's not the dwarf. Silence. You'll get us spotted. There are orcs in this room, and they've got bows and arrows. We need to devise a plan. Okay, I got a plan. You attack them while I stand guard, just in case somebody ambushes us. Eh, sounds like something a coward would say to avoid a fight. Absolutely not. It's very rational behavior. I've got a bow, too. I can shoot arrows. Yikes! Another good reason to take cover. When you're behind an obstacle, you're less likely to get hit. Even by friendly fire. Well, I've got no choice if you want to move ahead. we got to get rid of those orcs. How many are there? I can only see one of them right now. But the others must be close. I got you. A group of one. I hate people who make a fuss over nothing. When fighting alone, charging head-on is fine. But when in a group, a battle must be planned. Careful positioning can save you from crushing defeats. So the planning phase. During the planning phase, you can deploy your characters before combat starts. You can position your characters in the highlighted area. Movement doesn't cost action points during the planning phase, so you can take as long as you want to strategize. Still will hold your hand, as it is your first time. Select the elf who is out of cover. Have her take cover on the highlighted tile to protect her. Full cover can protect you from ranged attacks. They give your opponent a minus 50% penalty to their precision. Okay, let's orient her towards this way. Select the ranger. Have him take cover too. Hiding behind half cover will not fully protect you from ranged attacks, but the attacker will suffer a 25% penalty to precision when attacking you. So let's go here. Now select the thief. Position him on one of the highlighted tiles so that he's protected from ranged attacks and can sneak up to this orc. So, uh, maybe here? No, that's the highlighted one. Here's how the order of action is determined. Initiative is ranked depending on the character's courage. If their courage is equivalent, the higher agility is prioritized than the level of the characters. If their levels are the same, then it's up to chance. Click on fight whenever you are ready to begin combat. Let's do it. This orc is now in overwatch, which means he's keeping an eye on the area and will attack any enemy that enters it. Since he has not moved before going into overwatch, he can make two overwatch shots. If he had moved, he would only be able to make one shot. The ranger could move forward, but this would get him shot by the orc in overwatch. Too dangerous. Time to talk about the ability to delay your turn. So if a character has not used any action points, they can delay their turn to play at the end of the round. They will act their normal initiative the following turn. It's a useful ability when you'd like to let another character, friend or foe, act before you do. Now delay the ranger's turn. Let's delay. The thief is not the toughest or even the bravest of fighters, but he can dish out a lot of damage and interfere with your foes. Time to get rid of this orc's overwatch. Mouse over him to make his overwatch area appear on the ground. Well, this is it. 
This is the Overwatch area the enemy is watching. If one of your characters enter this area, they'll be targeted by Overwatch shot. A character who has entered Overwatch mode without moving before, like this one, can shoot twice. If a character is in Overwatch takes damage or if an enemy moves right next to him, their Overwatch will be cancelled. Waypoints. During movement you can set some waypoints by holding left control and pressing left click. This will give you the ability to determine a specific path for your character, instead of the suggested path. If the movement area becomes orange, this means you will sprint. Sprinting will allow you to move further, but will consume both your action points and end your turn. Move your thief closer by setting waypoints on the highlighted tiles to cancel the orc's overwatch. You can also use ALT to make all active overwatch zones appear. Okay, so let's... Now orient the thief towards the orc, okay. The elf is a former pony grooming champion, braiding category. She's also the least bad character with a bow and has some support skills that can be quite useful. Most over the highlighted tile. This will show the aiming orcs the targets the elf can shoot at. So I can shoot him here. <coughs> aiming arcs enable you to preview which targets you can reach by mousing over a tile. The color of the arc varies depending on your precision. Usually archers cannot shoot if an enemy is at melee range unless the latter is knocked over, stunned or frozen. Move the elf on the highlighted tile. Let's orient her towards the orc. Select the standard range attack, then mouse over the orc to ready your shot. Your range is highlighted in red on the ground. The enemies within range are also highlighted in red. The range of range attacks varies depending on your weapon and some skills. Since the orc is outside your maximum range, you will suffer a 10% penalty to your precision against him. So if a character, friend or foe is adjacent to your target and in your line of sight, they will be highlighted in orange, meaning there is a chance you shoot, he shoot them by accident. The probability of this happening is equivalent to 10% of your precision. It is shown in red. <coughs> so, attack the orc. Let's see, will I hit the thief? No, okay. Now that the orc's vigilance has been cancelled, you can safely move the ranger forward on the highlighted tile. Let's orient him here. Select your melee attack. Nice. Now let's talk about support. This is a crucial mechanic. When an ally is oriented towards your target, like the thief here, they will provide you with their support. Usually support will grant you a 5% bonus to precision. You can stop multiple supports, but only with melee attacks. Characters with high charisma will gain a higher bonus to their precision for every supporting character. Here, the ranger has a 9% bonus to his precision instead of 5, thanks to his charisma. Finally, as support does not require an action, a character can support an attack and if, even if they have already taken their turn the, for this round. Keep that in mind when orienting your characters. Let's attack him. <laughs> Opportunity attack. Wrong move. The orc just took two opportunity attacks to the face when fleeing. Each character controls the three tiles in front of them. If an enemy leaves this area, they will be hit by an opportunity attack. This type of attack deals slightly less damage than a normal attack but cannot be dodged or parried. It can still miss, however. Be mindful of opportunity attacks when planning your moves. So we were flanked now because we were oriented the other way and come back to move on. I think I can just kill him. Take this chicken shit! Look, the orc left his bow. Get your hands on the loot by clicking take all. Four gold coins and a lame ass long bow. Nice.
We did, thanks to my perfect planning. Let's keep going. The others can't be that far. So we can open the door here. Let's check uh, some loot. Ah, mage, six months. And heal with a broccoli. Also cures a poison status. Let's take everything. And let's go through the door. Ah, finally, there you are. Yeah, well, we had to fight off hordes of orcs to get here. Bloodthirsty and cunning orcs, mind you. And you wouldn't believe the stink in those toilets. Uh, you're losing me. He says he's stuck and can't open the gate. Looks like some kind of pantry, but it's empty. He says he only had a small bite. Mm. I see. There must be some kind of mechanism somewhere. Levers can be far from the mechanism they activate. Investigate the room for a lever to free the ogre. You can use... Okay. Tab to highlight. We have done it. Let's... Use the lever first. Here we go, it's opening! Do good buddy. Yippee! Aw, oh, I'm happy too, buddy. I'd have expected him to bend the bars. He was too anxious to be on his own. Ogres are very sensitive. All the cumbersome stuff the party finds usually ends up stashed in the ogre's bag, because he's the strongest. Since it's rather impractical to rummage through, we've come up with an interface for you. To open the inventory to check the contents of the ogre's bag. <clears throat> the ogre isn't the one who carries all your inventory on the right, but each character has their own equipment on the left. There is a weight limit to your inventory, so you cannot just carry everything around with you. Look, the boy you found in your last combat, mouse over to check out its characteristics. You can read about the characteristics of a weapon in the highlight area. All the weapons share the same four stats, but some also have additional magical properties. So it has damage, precision, critical chance, and critical damage. Okay, the damage range of the weapon, the accuracy bonus, critical chance, probability of striking a critical hit with this weapon, can be raised by items, and the critical damage multiplier. Its character can be equipped with a main weapon and a secondary weapon, with the exception of the Ogre and the Wizardess, who only have one weapon slot. The Ranger can equip a bow as a secondary weapon. Equip the bow now, you just found. Or by dragging it... Okay, so if I... Click it, equip... Nice. You can navigate between characters by clicking on the portraits. Look, the portrait of the Ogre is red. This means he suffers from an injury. Click on him. A character gets injured when they become unconscious during combat or take too much damage from a trap during exploration. Move the cursor over the ogre's injury to get more information. So they are permanent attribute penalties. They can be healed with specific consumables, bandages and first aid kits or by resting in a tavern. You will suffer the penalty associated with the injury as long as it's not healed. If a character falls in combat again while still wounded, the injury will get worse. Raising the corresponding penalty, there are three thresholds. So he has a broken rib, level 1. Breathing has become an agonizing, unbearable process. Other than that, you're fine. Health points minus 20. Use the bandage from your inventory to heal this nasty looking injury. So use... Nice. Well, I found some writing materials in his bag. I should be able to map the dungeon now. The wizardess keeps the map updated. It's usually best to act as if you know where you're going, although I'm pretty used to most players f***ing around by clicking haphazardly. Let's open the map. I feel like we're going in circles. The quest journal is on the left. You can not only find the objectives to your main quest, but also to your secondary quests. The map is on the right. So main quest, the dungeon of Nahilbeck. Well, that's a nice way to begin an adventure. Shit hit the pan when the dwarf smashed his axe against this strange magic and now everyone's gone. We have to regroup. I 
hear something. Someone's coming. Go check it out. Why should it be me? Rangers are usually the scouts. Coward! Yes, sir. It's a perfectly honorable life choice. Time for lunch, guys! Come on! Grab time! Intruders. Let's eat them, too! Maybe I could go back to the inn to ask for help. Shut up! We got no use for whips. You have to fight like everybody else. So skills, now that you have gathered some of your party, your characters have unlocked their first skills which will prove useful to defeat the Zorgs. Uh, do I need to move them further? No, let's start now. The Ranger is a jack of all trades. Range attacks, supports, heals, he has a lot of options. Select one of his tactical skills to learn more. So tactic is charge, high precision, raises precision of all allies until the combat end of combat or raise parry and dodge chance until the end of combat. Let's use precision. Here you'll find useful information about your skills. Every skill costs stamina and has a cooldown period. You'll gain back some stamina at the beginning of every turn. You can check the regen value by moving the cursor over the stamina bar. Okay. The ranger at level 1 can use tactics. These skills can influence all your allies no matter where they are on the map. Once activated, a tactic will stay active until the end of combat or until the ranger dies. Only one can be active at any time. Okay, tactic charge, offensive and defensive maneuver is the other one. Okay, now move your ranger on the highlighted tile. We're about to learn how to combine your character's strengths. Let's orient him here. The ogre is your most brutal character, however he's not that accurate. That's why he could use some support from your other characters. Oh, and he doesn't really like wearing armor. The ogre has the Kadula Opog skill. In ogreish this means please mind my personal space. Get close to the orc in order to use it. Let's go. Kadula Opog can push an enemy back two tiles. Since the ranger is oriented towards your target, the orc will also be targeted by an opportunity attack if he's pushed back. Attack the orc, nice. It's a good skill. <laughs> The Wizardess is your area of effect specialist. She is frail, but her powerful attacks can hit multiple enemies simultaneously. Some of her attacks can also inflict some powerful status effects like burning or frozen. There is an archer, first things first, let's take cover. Ok, let's orient the, her here. At level 1, the Wizardess has two spells under her belt, a cure minor wounds and the formidable Waza's Whirlwind. Spells cost astral energy and also have a cooldown period. You'll get some astral energy back at the beginning of every turn. You can check the regen value by moving the cursor over the astral energy bar. bar. Select the whirlwind. It is an area of effect spell which means it can also hurt your friends. Be careful where you cast it. Aim for the highlighted tile so it can hit multiple orcs simultaneously. That's nice. Toga! Swala! Bozwaza! The Thief's level 1 skill is a sneaky strike. This attack can dish out a lot of damage, but only if your target is facing away from you. Since there are no orcs in range facing away from you, delay your turn and let them act first. Maybe you'll find an opening after their turns. So let's delay his turn. The elf is exposed, she is a frail character. Position her behind cover with a wizard desk so you can protect her from the archer who is about to act. The elf skill is the Elven Ricochet. It's a highly sophisticated technique which will randomly hit up to two targets in a tile, two tile radius around the last target. Shoot the orc on the highlighted tile to have a good chance of hitting the other orcs. Be careful as it might also hit your friends. It is an Elven technique after all. So it can hit me also. Whoa, whoa! Oops. Wrong target! Oh. <laughs> 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 
panel an orc is vulnerable to your sneak strike. Sneak up behind him. Use your sneak strike on this fool. Uh, let's finish the combat now. Okay. Um. Let's go here. Can I attack him? Yeah, why not? Here you go, a great victory! Don't forget to take your loot and to heal your characters before the next fight. Click on back whenever you're ready. So, got gold coins and chair canner armbands. They have been reinforced, keeping your arms safe of rogue splinters. Take all. Uh, heal everyone, or uh, can I say heals injuries? Um, yeah, let's. Heal. Wow, what a fight! Still, those orcs weren't in fighting shape. I think they were running from something. If that's the case, so should we. Enough defeatism. Let's go. We still have to find the dwarf and the barbarian. So only two characters left to find. Some loot. Bronze vase. The simple vase created by some no-name is made even uglier. Okay, light beer. Look everything. Is there anything else? No, it doesn't seem so. Let's check the inventory a bit. Can I equip? Uh, let's equip it. Why not? Crap, what a mess. The armbands. They give you one protection. Let's equip those two. Let's get some Wither Broccoli equipped. Now he'll get the healing potions. I've got some nuts for the squirrels. Oh wait a minute. Do I have something to jot down some quick notes? She doesn't have a belt, I guess. How ironic for a thief to empty his own pockets. Possible slot. Yeah, let's put this in also. And let's proceed. Come on, have a taste of my act, you orc scum. There's one dwarf yet in this dungeon who still draws breath. Yes, we'll kick your face in. You're lucky we're here. You're in over your head. Nothing's over my head. I'm tall for a dwarf. So the dwarf and the barbarian are in tough spot. You have to help them before they get overwhelmed. Begin combat when you're ready. Um, hmm. Let's put him here. Thief can move. Uh, well, here maybe. Hmm. Now let's fight. So, now that the ranger is equipped with a secondary weapon, he has a new tactical option, he can perform ranged attacks. Play as your, your turn as you see fit. Can I... No, I will sprint if I go here. Yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, we need the tactics. Precision. So the Barbarian is a powerful, nimble fighter. He can move a little further than his companions and he hits hard. However, his protection is rather low and his precision is not that good. The good thing with Barbarian is that he's rather straightforward. His first skill, Steel Barrage, targets all three tiles in front of him. So let's see what happens. Another one bites the dust. Leaving this spot is still too dangerous for now as you would get hit by two opportunity attacks. Okay, let's end the turn for the barb. 
Oh. Your enemies have skills too, those orcs can knock you down, although there's a chance to resist this thanks to your physical resistance. A knockdown character will skip their turn and is easier to hit. The Dwarf. Our Dwarf is a noble descendant of Gordil's shiny ass and as such was predestined to an adventurous life. He has enough hit points to endure the charge of a rabid troll, but is rather slow. He loves heavy armor, shields and gold coins. The Dwarf is in trouble, weakened and surrounded, he may very well die before the next turn if you leave him like this. Time to talk about defensive stance, it's a skill that all of your characters know. Let's select it and use it on the Dwarf. Uh, the defensive stat raises your character's protection and lowers the precision of any enemy attacking you until next turn, it will also protect them from critical hits. However, a character who is in defensive stance cannot perform any opportunity attacks. Defensive stance can be cancelled if the character gets stunned, knocked over or scared. Let's use it on the dwarf. The shortest path to your companions is blocked by crates. Thankfully, some elements of the environment can be destroyed like fragile looking crates. Usually it takes two hits to break them but the ogre is so brutal he can destroy them in one. Plus, he cannot miss this attack. Well, let's attack the crate. Um, let's uh, go here, I guess. Bah, the archer died. He just got hit by a critical hit, and the barbarian is now unconscious. He is not fully out of action yet, but you have a limited number of turns to rescue him with a healing spell or a potion. Beware, a character who's fallen unconscious in battle will suffer from an injury. So the wizard has a spell of cure minor wounds, it's not a very powerful spell but it can be used at range, 5 tiles, select so cure minor wounds. An unconscious character can be healed with potions or healing spells, but will suffer from an injury after standing up. If a character has not been healed before the unconscious stage ends, they will be out of action until the end of combat. So let's cast this. <sighs> And uh, I think I will stay here. I don't think I can use a whirlwind. Immobilization. These enemies can immobilize you with a crippling strike. An immobilized character can still act normally but cannot move anymore. They're also easier to hit. So where do we go? Uh, I think I will go here. Let's, uh... Can I kill anyone? Can I use a ricochet or is it too dangerous? No. Yeah, he's down. Yeah, he's gonna hit the ogre, I think. Yeah. Let's move him here. Let's just kill him. No, he's not gonna die, but uh great hit, nice. So the barb, if I can delay his turn. He doesn't have a good precision. Oh we'll try to kill him, base 65% only. Uh yeah, let's try that. Send the turn. Now the dwarf deals damage and knocks over your target. I don't think I need that. Let's kill him. Can 
I move? No, he cannot move at all. Because he's immobilized, I think. Now the ogre... Uh, let's move him here. <coughs> uh, I thought I could use an attack of opportunity or something. Let's... Uh, I think I will... I cannot heal. Cannot use this either. Let's... Uh, I'm just gonna stay here. So she has already acted, I think. Let's go. He's on overwatch. Wow, that means no one can attack. Mm. Can I... Can I just attack him or he will hit me? Okay, that means I just cannot move if I'm on overwatch. Nice. And a turn. Okay, so he got hit, which is great. Which now means I can go here freely. Oh my god. Unconscious too. Yeah, I messed up with this guy. I thought I would use an attack of opportunity. Can I use Whirlwind without hitting my guys? Yep. Toga, Swala, Bozwaza! In your face! So let's, uh. Let's hit him. Critical failure. That's what happens when you team up with an elf! Oh. In the turn. Ah, come on. He's on Overwatch again. But I think I can hit him. Ah! Your enemies are fleeing. They will try to run into the yellow area that just appeared. If they make it, you will earn less experience. In some battles, there won't be a retreat area. And they'll try to fight to their last breath. Stop them before they reach this retreat area. Okay. Can I do something about it? No. The dwarf. Oh crap. Let's orient him here. I'm going to die. Kadula or Pog? Nice. So we have oh. suffered an injury. Uh, Andy Dowd, Boots of Strategic Retreat, Movement 1. Dodgy Pot, Protection 0, Physical Resistance 2, Minor Health Potion. Let's heal everyone. That potion did look weird. Take everything. It's a weirdo. Old dude with staff. A wizard! It looks more like a broom. Uh, hello? Hey, pay no attention to me. 
In fact, you shouldn't even be able to see me. It's just my invisibility ring acting up again. He's a wizard. He looks more like a janitor. That's very reductive. I'm the head cleaning operative of this dungeon's mortuary maintenance, Janos Hitor. I deal with the corpses left behind by adventurers. The smell would get unbearable without me. He's just gonna eat this orc if you don't mind. I don't, as long as the floor stays clean and it means less work for me. Ew, I'm gonna be sick. We're looking for a way to the next floor. Usually, people like to take the stairs. Yes, but there are some magic locks. Really? Didn't notice them. I must be immune thanks to a spell of mine which enables me to go wherever blood has been spilt. We could make him take it to the dungeon, master. Yes, take us with you. Nuh-uh. No time for such threats. Got work to do. A wizard. That was a wizard. He realized he should withdraw with haste. Who's this haste guy? So any consumables you can find... Uh, can be equipped on your character's belts from your inventory. Move forward to the dark hallways of the dungeon of hell. I held back. Uh, can I? Let's check so the map. let's update the map. Oh, here. I think I'm hearing some vague chanting in the distance. Yeah, I think it's too quiet. This room might be trapped. Beware. We should find some other way. I don't listen to you anymore. You're a downer and you bum me out. I just have a survival instinct. Coward! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's with all the shit talking? Put on kissy buddies. <laughs> Oops. Ah. Uh, a trap. Oh, dang it. A trap. I told you so. You should have detected this trap. No one asked me to. What? You... Well, it's official. I'm going to ignore the thief now. Anyway, now we're asking you, would you mind looking out for traps, please? Well, I'll see what I can do. I don't get where we're wasting our time with this guy. Neutralizing a trap is a risky endeavor, which could bring one to a gruesome end. I've got a bad feeling about this. So a trap, it's a staple of dungeoning and can be very dangerous for your team. Thankfully, the thief can detect them. To activate trap detection mode, choose a thief as your leader. The technic trap is good, but disarming it is better. Once he has spotted a trap, the thief can try to disarm it. Get closer to the statue and interact with it to attempt disarming it. So let's uh, use some bandages here. Okay, and I think the barb has an injury. Nice. How can people put their hands in my pockets? Hands off my gold, my precious gold! So folks, this is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon. Stay safe. Have a great day.